What's up, guys? Welcome to today's podcast. So on the podcast today, I just wanted to give a little more context before we get started. I have a special guest. Uh, his name is Jason Everett. I've been friends with him for quite a while now. Uh, we met through social media. He owns a and runs a, a company called High Performance Salon Academy. Uh, they do all kinds of cool things. They're pushing the industry. Uh, on the podcast, we're going to talk about commission uh, salons. We're going to talk about booth rental. We're going to talk about uh, social media, um, marketing your salon, tons and tons of stuff. Uh, lots of tips packed into this podcast, so I think you're really going to like it. I also want to say that this podcast is brought to you by our friends at MinervaBeauty.com. Uh, super, super awesome salon furniture company, also salon tools, color carts, uh, cutting stools, uh, everything you could ever want to put into your salon building, even reception chairs. Um, so there's so much stuff. So go check out MinervaBeauty.com slash FSE. Uh, you can get a little bit of a discount if you use that code. So go to MinervaBeauty.com slash FSE uh, and you can check that out. So let's not waste any more time. I want to get started with the podcast with Jason. Uh, this isn't an interview. This is packed with things that are going to help you be better behind the chair and in your salon business. So I hope you guys enjoy again. Uh, thanks for listening. It, it, What's up, guys? It, Welcome it. to the Matt Neck Podcast. This is we'll cut this way, where basically we talk here and we talk about how we feel when Shop we woke it, up. It, <laughs> and it, we it, discuss it. multiple topics. Let like me that. show so you the way. On the show today, it's gonna be I've got my uh, my good friend, my pal, Jason. Jason. It, it. It's it's how are you? <laughs> good. How are you? It's gonna be a great so it's uh, got. I still got some Matt beats in my ears, by the way. I don't know if you got the same thing. Like a repeat? Yeah. We're still, yeah, I, nice. No, it's just like, I just got your jams, and I'm like, I just thinking to myself, I wish I had my own rap. <laughs> you can have it. it. Not that one, but you can have your own. It's, uh, I can, I, you too can have your own rap. You know what's funny? Do you still have the echo or no? Nah, I'm good, man. We're, we're okay. rocking now. It was just, I was getting extra tunes. I just got a long tail under <laughs> tunes. That's all. Nice. Okay. All right. So, um, the 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 one thing i think you actually and this i want to do an introduction of you just so people understand who you are and why you're on here with me but um, dangerous and we also yeah and we also uh have the chat up so i can see all of you guys chatting this morning so thank you for joining us uh we're going to talk all kinds of stuff salon business social media uh you know that's what jason's uh specialty is he has a company high performance salon right Academy. You can throw the A in Academy. there too. High Performance okay. Salon. HighPerformanceSalon.com, but High Performance Salon Academy. It's just a yeah. long URL, man. Long URL. And so there's some things I want to get into with you, but uh, basically the way that I like to work this podcast is there's a lot of podcasts out there that are just going to sit there and interview people. I think I want to give as much to the people that are watching as possible, and I think you have a lot to deliver on that. So my quick intro for you is you did start this company. Um, how long ago did you start it? Dude, you know what? I actually November is eleven years for me. Uh, wow. November is eleven years. We we did high performance salon has been around for three. Like it, it's our third birthday. Uh, but I've been doing training, coaching, and working with people. Uh, you know, started my own company eleven years ago. So it's it's uh you know starting to starting to do good things. So and and what I find interesting about your company is that in a time where I feel like the salon industry is moving so far into individual operation. Um, you're going full force like salon like you're like you're trying to yeah like like commission you know. salon yeah yeah so i think that that's yeah. like it's it's interesting to me and you have a lot of successful clients right so um yeah totally and, and we have a commission salon here so um i don't think the days of commission are dead at all and and i think you would definitely argue that but i do think that there's a confusion out there of that kind of that kind of work or whatever so it's just kind of cool that you're you know, you're leading the way in that. So those are some things. If you guys have questions about commission or salon stuff in like that, definitely post yeah. that in the chat um, because that would be some good. Um, I think that would bring a lot to the even the other people that might be thinking the same thing. Um, so mm -hmm. when you decided to start this company, why why did you decide to like what was the the whole purpose? What is your goal with it? 
Yeah, well, when I first started this company, man, you know, the initial idea was uh, I really loved coaching, training, and teaching people. And 11 years ago when I started, um, I didn't actually, you know, go out saying, okay, I want to work with salons. What happened is like over the progression of time of going out and working with clients, what I found is that people in the salon industry, A, were my kind of people. And I just say that because it, it's, uh, they're just, they have amazing hearts. They love people. They're, uh, very fashionable. That's a good day. Uh, and and the cool thing about it is like they're an underserved market. Like just like you said, man, there's so many people that like the commission salon industry uh, has kind of gone away. Like, you know, more than 50% of the salons now all over the United States are rental salons. I think there's right. a lot of reason for that. Uh, that that's not that can be fixed. It can be changed. I think it's it's a lack of really good leaders that are out yeah. there, and it's like this: the salon industry itself, like it it doesn't really even tell people how to operate. They're just like figure it out. And when you can run your whole business on your cell phone, you're like, I guess I don't need anything else then. And yeah. they think that's kind of the whole business. And that the key thing that you said in that already is leadership. And I was thinking about mm -hmm. that on the drive. The one thing yeah, I wanted yeah, yeah. to talk to you about that's the the fail in in everything, right? is just totally. under like getting to be with somebody that is actually somebody that, you know, recognizes talent, um, you know, when they see it and kind of goes all in, like just understanding how to, to, to guide people that are working with you. Right. So yeah. let's talk about, so somebody commented, they said they usually, people usually equate commission with being broke. So let's talk. Interesting. Right. It's an interesting thought. I, well, so, I, I equate boot rent with being out to pasture. So, I mean, I don't know. What do you want to say? Like, <laughs> so, so, I mean, it, it's, it, and I don't mean to cut anybody down, by the way. Like, if you're on here and your commission or your booth rent, this isn't a battle for what's the better model. It's yeah. just really like, what what does your lifestyle need to have? Like, are you trying to grow and develop and like turn this into a legacy? Like, you can't turn booth rental into a legacy business that carries on that works with thousands. Right. It just doesn't work that way. Like yeah. you can have a very good income and you can own a job. Cool. Booth rental, suite rental. Like it's a good deal if you want to make up your hours and work whenever you want and things like that. But if you really want to build something like I'm into building businesses and yeah. when you build a business, it requires that you, you know how to lead, you know how to build a company, you know how to buy buildings, you do things that other businesses do to create mass, not just be somebody who just is one step above working from home. And a lot of times people go into rental first because they then want to own a commission salon. That's kind of their way to break out. That's cool too. It's yeah. just, what is the timing in your life and the piece that you need? Yeah. And let's, so, and, and I think that that's kind of what happens is people, um, you know, they, we've said this forever. They don't like their boss. So then they yeah. go off on their own and they either open their own salon or they go booth rental. Right. And, um, and I'm, I'm with you on all of it. Like I, I agree that, um, if booth rental makes your lifestyle fit you, then it's perfect. Right. And if working commission and like, but building a legacy, like as a commission employee, you're also not building a legacy really. You know what I mean? So like, well, I think yeah, that's, but, but being a commission employee is step one. That's like saying like, Oh, I'm, I'm never, I mean, even if you worked at McDonald's, right. If you're like, Oh, right. there's no way I can make money with McDonald's. That's just crazy. You're like, well, yeah, you're working at the front counter. Like you got to move right. into management and then you got to figure out how to own the, own the business. And then you figure out how to own the building and then you open up 10 of them. And then it's like, there's a path to there's create path, yeah. awesome things. But if, if you just think it's about making a burger, you're sadly mistaken. Like, yeah. and that's the deal is people just go, well, I know how to make burgers and I'm never going to get rich working the front counter at McDonald's. I'm not saying comparing salons to McDonald's. I just want to give an outside example, right? It's just right. that so many people are good at cutting hair, are good at coloring, and they and they just are like, well, I can, I can make enough money to survive and feed my family, and you know what? If I go off on my own, instead of having to give the salon owner that I don't even like anyway some of that, I'll keep all of it for myself. And because right. I can run square on my phone and track calendar appointments and like, you know, use chat bots to do things like, I guess I don't need a salon owner. And that's the mistake because people just re think that the salon, like, well, here's the mistake the salon owners make. The salon yeah. owners make the mistake of just providing them with a chair and a spot to work. And like, right. they don't do anything else. And, and yeah. even for you, man, like you, you, know, you provide education, right? And I say this all the time. There's, there's two things that changed in the world that really created massive booth rental. Number one is salon owners used to hold world-class education as a way to hold their staff hostage. 
right? Yeah. Is like, well, we bring in the best educators from this brand or that brand. You can only get that here in our salon and we'll market for you on radio, TV, whatever. This is old school, right? Radio, yeah. TV, whatever. And we'll get customers to come to the door because of our location and whatever. And now it's like, well, I can just go on Instagram, put out a post and get clients and I can just check out freesaloneducation.com and get schooled on, on hair. So like, what do I need you for? Oh, just a chair and a shampoo bowl. So I guess I'm going to go rent then because there's right. nothing else that that salon's providing at that point. Yeah. And that's, and that's 80% of salons, probably even more, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I don't know. That's like it, I'm pulling that so number out of nowhere. I heard a crazy stat. I heard this crazy stat that said uh, 7% of salons, this is just going to give you some example, 7% of salons, um, uh, it on the planet, 7% earn a profit, 20% yeah. break even, and the rest are going broke. Like that yeah. stat is so crazy to me. And it's just because I think there's so many salons that like, and I, I was just talking with this, our people, we just got back from big training in, uh, in uh, what the heck was I in, in New Orleans with our salon owner people. And like, what was, what was crazy about that is I said, you guys are like the one to two, maybe 3% of salons on the planet that make money, that are growing. Most commission salons are just like the owners working and not taking a paycheck for their work behind the chair in most commission yeah. salons because they don't know how to lead. They're worried their staff's going to leave and go booth rent. And they're just so panicked about it. They're working for free at their own friggin' salon. Like that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the thing. So uh, and there was a question here. Oh, uh, Faith says, uh, you can make it as a booth runner if you put the hours in and commit to it. So this is where I think people need to like, it's just making clarity of it. Like you can make it booth rent. You can absolutely, yeah. you can drive a nice car. You can, it's it, what Jason's talking about is like creating a business. So there's just a different right. thing. Like uh, one you person it is, is a business, but it can be a, it can fit your lifestyle. It can make your lifestyle, whatever. But like to build a business and a legacy, like he's saying, you're you you build a company, right? So it's just right. there are two different ways of looking at it. But I I understand what you're saying about the path now, like looking at the fact that you have, um, you know, you start out as a hair cutter or a hair colorist or whatever, and you learn. Like if you have a good salon owner, you're learning uh, the way the business works. I didn't like when I started working in a salon. You know, I worked and a salon owner that was, you know, he was on the road a lot. He was working three days a week in the salon. I didn't really learn a lot. And then all of a sudden I ended up getting mm -hmm. the salon kind of by accident. Like it wasn't a plan. And then, uh, I ended interesting. Up with, you know what I mean? So I ended up getting yeah. the salon and, and me and my wife are like, we, we didn't know like any, like we didn't have any money. We didn't know <laughs> anything. Right. And it's like, he, like I, we put ourselves in debt buying it from him. And then you're like, okay, here you go, figure it out, you know, and you got staff, half of them didn't want to be there. Um, you know, so right. like you're trying to weed out all of that. So it's a definite, like, I, I commend anybody that runs a commission or just a salon business in general, because you're dealing with a lot of personalities and you're dealing with a lot of like, you're dealing with some people that are super talented and easy, like not easy, but like they easily build, right. They become successful. And then you're dealing with the other part of the industry where people, they want things kind of given to them. Right. So, and that's everything in life. That's not just salon. Yeah. You know, that's just like, I mean, I, I, dude, I think, I think one of the things that happens is like, you can be like, I don't, I really feel like I'm going to upset some booth renters. So don't get all mad at me guys. But like, I think you can be like, you can make money if you hustle hard as an Uber driver. But you're never yeah. gonna own Uber. Like you're not like driving for Uber is like a turn on and turn off job. It's like a light switch, right? Like when yeah. you're hustling, you can do it. But if you ever want to get to a point in your life where you don't have to hustle to make money, you cannot do that as a renter. That's I the think, deal. And I think I like people just miss that there's other ways to make money in the salon industry besides I cut hair and I get paid. A better way to even think about it too, I think, or just to add on to it, is that eventually you don't you're not gonna want to cut hair. Right. Eventually, like so most people have a hard time seeing that they can't even see it. They're like, well, yeah. when I'm 82, then my hands won't work. That's what I yeah. hear all the time. I've seen that from like day one. I just know I like I knew I was going to be into doing hair like I'm going to be into cutting hair for the, the art of cutting hair. I'll be into it forever. Right. But totally. The, but standing behind a chair doing, you know, 12 clients a day, I'm already over it. Right. Like I want it. I, right. I knew I that's why I didn't name my salon my name. It's why, you know, yeah. free salon education isn't isn't Matt Beck education. Like I, I don't want right. it to all be me. I want it to be something that lives on a lot longer than me. Um, so I, and I think when you look at like Booth Rental, 
if you go booth rental, you need to make sure that you're planning for that day. Plan for that day because you can't just grab the money. You better be saving, go. man. You better be yeah. saving. And that's, and that's the thing is like commission too. Uh, like it's, it's commission so doesn't change that, it, right? So not no, every stylist you, is going to go through that path of becoming a manager or an owner. You know, they're not. Right. So. And I think I think that's the that the thing you got to decide, right? Is like no matter what you're doing. And I think if you have a goal to just be that employee for the rest of your life, in some cases, it does make more sense for you to booth rent when you're like, look, like as an employee, I can make different hours. I can work when I want. Like I know a lot of like moms that are like, look, I only want to work 20 hours and working inside a commission salon doesn't work for me to do that. Like that's fine. I think there's lots of opportunity to do it. And again, I don't mean to make one against the other. Just in my mind, I look at it and I go, I'm about building legacy and legacy in my mind means that there's money that flows to you in your life without you working. It's about right. being able to put together either a team of people, and this is hard because we're in a people economy, right? Especially in the salon industry. It's not like we got robots who are cutting hair. It's a people economy. So when yeah. you're talking about people, it's like, I want to build a group of people that can work and outperform what one person by themselves can do. Because I think yeah. sometimes the other thing that people misunder, like this is what I hear when people are in booth rent for a while, is they go, I miss my team. Like I miss, I miss being around other people who inspire me. Like I'm in a suite and I'm all by myself and like, I, I don't get better. I go to education events, but like I miss sitting around and like chatting about cool new things that we're doing. And I miss the contests and I miss the, the things that really make me feel like I'm part of a family. And I think human beings by nature gravitate to, towards each other, right? Like we all don't live in yeah. huts on the top of a mountain. Like we live in cities. We literally cluster together because when you pile the resources of many together, you serve many. And one of the things is when you operate in isolation, that that your growth immediately stops. Yeah. Like that, that's the deal. I was on the, I was on a plane with this gal and she's like, no, she's like, what do you do? I said, oh, I help salon owners make more money. And she goes, oh, I, I'm fine. I have plenty of money. And I'm like, for now, like, I think that's cool. But like, what happens if you break your arm or break your leg or, you know, you can't cut hair anymore? Like what's going to happen? She's like, well, I don't know. I'm not going to deal with that right now. I'm like, well, that's kind of the problem is if there's nothing else you can do other than rely on you to physically work, you're going to be in trouble in the future. And what do you say, what do you say to people that are, um, thinking, well, so what's the difference if I'm, if I'm booth renting or, um, yeah. working as a commission stylist, what makes that different? You know what I mean? Like from that standpoint, like what's the not, advantage not of in, each? Is that what you mean? Not the advantage, but like what makes it, what is, what is setting my life up? Like if booth rental kind of has that ceiling, but I think commission, why doesn't commission have the ceiling if you're not going to be a manager owner and then open 10 places? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think it kind of depends. So if you're talking about commission, like there's for sure a ceiling in commission because if, if your only job is about working as hard as you can and, I, you know, I don't know, do you, have, do you have level systems inside your salon, Matt? Do you have like yeah. a level one, level two, level four, yeah. you do all that? So like, you know, you can graduate through the levels and you can earn more. You can, you know, potentially earn more commission. You can sell more retail. I mean, there's lots of ways for you to make money that way. But I think like the real deal, in my opinion, is I love working with people who like are not just interested in being good themselves, right. but they're, they want to help other people succeed. And if you have like, I, I think the biggest deal is, is that if you want, like if you have the desire to grow yourself and you love growing other people, I think that's when the commission salon really happens. Like, dude, clearly you love growing people. Otherwise you wouldn't be putting out all these you know videos and all right. stuff like yeah. helping people really succeed. But there's so many salon owners that like they really love growing other people, but they don't know how to do it because there's no leadership training available for them. There's no like salon owner school boot camp that you can go to. You right. know, it's not like a, an add on to every beauty school is one extra year and you can learn how to run your own commission salon like that doesn't exist right. yeah right it's, but it's I, I think yeah no, go, ahead. go ahead man no i i was gonna <laughs> move into it so there somebody said why is only 38 people watching which is like funny to me because like it, that's like on one platform they're watching or whatever and there's multiple platforms this is yeah. broadcast on but at the same time we're talking business and that's why and man that that's why you know, and that's what yeah. I think it's like, like if we so, were on talking about some sweet new color, then everybody, yeah. be, you know, jamming on it. And they're like, oh, you're talking about like business and stuff. I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. You're talking about yeah. my future and like how I can how I can actually get the house that I want and the lifestyle that I want and all that other stuff. Like, yeah, I'm just saying if you know, and that it is. A, I mean, that's that's a real thing, dude. Like I talk about it all the time because it's funny to me because I talk business topics and like my reach only goes so far. And then I watch yeah. you do some cool cut and everybody's like, oh, the new cut. 
Yeah. I'm like we were talking about leadership. You don't care. Okay. All right. Well, and that's why I talk. So like when I put out content and that's where you can kind of shift into social media a little bit. Like when I put out content, yeah. I focus very strong on, uh, going like hair, 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 business, hair, 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 business, like, or podcast. <laughs> like I would love to do a podcast every day. Like I would do this every day, sit down, talk business, but I know my numbers would completely it's, fold. Yeah. Like you couldn't do yeah, a podcast. Thanks, every thanks day. for talking about my social media life. Thank you. <laughs> so like that's it's the not thing. bad. I'm just saying that the interest is just smaller. That's all. Like if you look it's at the small, grand yeah. scope of things, it's just a smaller group of people that look but at it, it should and go, be larger. I really am interested in my business. It, it, here's the thing. If you look at the number of people that operate on this planet, and again, same thing. Like we had a salon, you know, we have salon owners that are in our program that have a hundred staff, have two hundred staff. We have salon owners that have 30 staff. Like those, those people that I love talking to, they're rare. I mean, the average salon size is three. Like, yeah, that's that's right. it. And it, it's because most people can handle about four to seven relationships in their life. And then as soon as they get to that's seven me. relationships, they're like, oh, damn, this is so hard, man. Like, it's like I got to like, you know, listen yeah. to these people and like lo love on them. And, and it's not a bad thing. It's just it like in order to go from your first five to seven people, there's a whole different gear you have to find. And that's what we do in our academy is like when you want to get bigger than seven people, like that's what we're about. And I don't mean like people, then people would say this, they go, well, I don't want a hair factory, Jason. I'm not looking for like, you know, a hundred right. people, churn and burn, stamp them out, right? Like your, your, your thing the other day, you only got 15 minutes to do a haircut or otherwise you're out of here. Like, you know, this right. whole jam, sorry to bring that up, but like yeah. the whole jam is like, <laughs> but just that, that whole jam is that, that I think so many people, like they just kind of get to that point and they're like, dude, I can lead seven but I don't want to lead 27. That just sounds exhausting. But that's where the magic is. And here's the interesting thing. That's where the magic is for the owner, but also for the team too, is like when you're on a team of 27 other people inspiring each other and challenging each other and like pushing hard, it allows you to open up to see what the possibilities are. Because on your team of seven, you might be, and I, this is crazy, but like you might be the big fish in that teeny little pond of seven people. You're like, mm, I do, I do 60 grand a year. I do a hundred grand a year. I do whatever in my team of seven. You put you on a team of 107. Now all of a sudden the game is real. And like you can see that you might not be the best and that should challenge you to want to do more. And now all of a sudden we got people who are doing, you know, 150 grand, 200 grand, like raising prices, doing all these other things. And by the way, still serving their guests, still yeah. loving on people, still taking care of, you know, Esther that you've had for a hundred years, like whatever person that you think like would leave you if you were a bigger salon, those people still love you even more because you can provide more resources for them. That might be like the first time. So I, I'm definitely the person that like only wants, I don't, we have a staff of, of five and I don't want yeah, any, yeah, yeah. I don't want any more. And Christina would be right on board with me, but, um, yeah. unless like we loved someone and then it would be like, okay, please come. But like, other than that, sure. so it's always fascinating because you're very pro, like build it and build it and build it. Right. So like, and that's why I like surrounding myself with people that, um, make me question my thoughts. <laughs> so you, um, so, so I want to say this, man, I, I've, yeah. I've had a team of people in my life. Like I've been in a place before where I was like, I'm only going to have five people around me. And can yeah. I just tell you what it was for me? This, this isn't you. This is my story. Okay. Yep. Is it honestly, because when I had more people in the past, like I've had teams of up to 45 people that I personally was responsible for. And like, yeah. Honestly, it was such a nightmare because I, I wasn't a good enough leader for those 45 people that I just said, forget it. Like, I don't want to do it. And so what I've had to learn is like, if I'm going to really lead people, and by the way, bro, you lead people all the time. Like you have a much bigger team yeah, no. than five in the, in the grand scheme of things. Cause you have so many yeah. other people you deal with, but it's like, for me, it was just this leadership piece that I had to get to that next level of leadership in order to start growing my team. And every time I do it, it scares the crap out of me, honestly. And it's just that like reservation of like, can I really do this? Is it, is it going to make, can I really make 25 people life, 25 other people's lives better? Or am I just cool with the like five, seven that I can really focus on? Yeah, exactly. All right. So another question, how do you recommend yeah, yeah. building social media business page? Kind of general, well, but. that's an interesting topic right now. Social media business on Instagram, on Facebook. I mean, I can chat about all of them. You type in whoever that was, uh, type in a little bit more, but like, look, here, here's the deal. Like we're, we're, I was just talking with somebody about this the other day is like, we're in a, we're in a spot right now, um, as a business and man, I got to answer like three questions before I answer that question. So sorry for the question to question, but yeah, 
we're in a spot now if you're using Facebook or on Instagram that basically if you're not paying to play, like you're not playing anymore. So people are always asking me like, what do I post? What's the best time to post? And I'm like, guess what? It's not about the best time to post anymore. Gone are the days of best time to post because we live in a day of promoting and making sure you get a return on your investment. Like yeah. we've graduated. That was, that was like five years ago. Now the question is, what content do I put out that... Um, attracts attention when I continue to promote it. And I'm not talking about boosted posts or just putting five bucks in. I'm talking about, are you creating strategies that lead to people actually making an appointment inside the salon? Are they filling out questionnaires? Are they applying for makeover consultations? Like we, we've really got to move away from like blasting information because people just, you know, Facebook that pages used to be your way to blast. Hold on. So, um, when you said filling on uh, a form for like, uh, like a consultation, right? Do you have yeah. people doing yeah, yeah. that? Like, are you? Yeah, dude. Social? So, well, yeah. Let's so let's talk about this. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so here I'll I'll give you some inside yeah. deals. I'll give you all some right, stuff. All right, so on. we we talk about one of our one of our marketing pieces that that works really well for the salons that we do is we do we do app online applications like lead forms they're called on Facebook and you can do this on Instagram. We have people fill out lead forms for consultations for makeover consultations. So we'll put up a bunch of stuff and like, hey, if, you, if you're sick and tired of your stylist always saying same thing as last time, okay? Uh -huh. Same thing as last time or little off the top or hey, it's been six weeks since I saw you, same deal. What happens is people get tired of their stylist. And so yeah. we have actually people who run ads in the local marketplace that say, if your stylist says these things, it might be time to check out something new. You might want to check us out over at myreallycoolsalon.com, whatever. And what they do is they fill out a little quick questionnaire that says things like, well, what are you looking for? Are you looking to make a big change, a significant change? Are you looking for style? Are you looking for makeup? And so what happens is, and this is kind of like, I mean, I can't go too deep because it's it's just a lot. But, but the yeah. idea is, a salon owner should have a machine that pumps you new people into your salon for between $15 to $25 for somebody to sit down in that consultation chair. And they should be walking out spending between $100 to $200 in product services, retail, uh, you know, cross-platform, like you consulting them on, you know, on a total restyle for that person. And so what happens is like now that we're in this pay to play advertising world, you have to quantify your result. So if you just say, well, I boosted the post and a thousand people saw it, it's completely different than saying, I boosted a post, I spent $100, I had five guests come down for that $100, and each of those five guests spent $150, and now yes. I've made money for my advertising so I can put more money back into my advertising. That's the magic. And so when you're a booth renter, like sometimes like going back to that thing for a second, is that sometimes like, you've got to learn how to become a freaking marketer on your own and do it. And it's like, people just post like, I have appointment openings on Thursday because I had five cancellations. Please let me know if you want to come down. And all you're really doing is talking to the same people that you always talk to. You're not really a marketer. You're just kind of like an announcer at that point. Yeah. And that's, a, so when, whenever I'm teaching a social media class, it's all about, um, you know, giving something to the person on the other side. So if, like yeah. I said, if I were to do an interview of you, and you talk about Jason's life, right? No one cares. Yeah. They don't care because yeah. they don't know who you are. <laughs> what? And, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, but they don't know who I am. So like if, if I were yeah. to sit there, My mom would care. That's it. Yeah, exactly. And my mom too. She's probably watching right now. So that's like <laughs> the thing. You, oh, very few people care until you give them something juicy about social media. So now you've delivered right. something that is valuable to them so now all of a sudden they're like oh this guy right. all right he's not just Anthony, yeah and, uh, and by the way he's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not he's not just, just building the other case yeah and, and by the way not anti-booth rant i I'm just, just teach kidding. the other I, system he's not anti-booth just just because it'll be a meme somewhere jason know, hates <laughs> booth renters it, it's gonna happen um but here, uh, here's one other thing i want to tell you too that we we give away yeah. we do a training called a salon owner evolution revolution and again like i said i think the lack of leadership in the salon industry is what's creating people to basically say screw you matt i don't want and this nobody would say this to you yeah. your team i'm sure loves no, you but like would. they say you know what I'm out of here because, you know, I, I can, it's easier for me to do it on my own. And that's basically what they're saying is people leave you. And this is like the hard truth. People leave you because you're not leading them is they don't see a future with you and their future they can create on their own is better than the future you've created for them. And that's sad. Like a group of people should be able to create a greater world together. It's like, let me ask you, if you wanted to build a society from scratch, do you want to do it by yourself or do you want to do it with your 10 best friends? Like you'd right. probably say, let's do it with our 10 best friends, right? So anyway, the reason why I'm saying that is that 
we do a thing called Solana or Evolution Revolution. And one of the tips I give there, speaking of that um, like really cool application, you can use Facebook lead forms uh, and you can use it on Facebook and Instagram. But there's another really killer tool that I've been using a lot lately called ManyChat. Have you been playing with ManyChat yet? No, I don't know what that is. Oh, bro. Okay. We need, we need to have a separate off-air conversation. <laughs> Many, M-A-N-Y-C-H-A-T, ManyChat. And, and basically, okay. we've created this tool that basically allows you to go on. And if people message your page or if something like let's say somebody watches this video and we yeah. say, hey, comment with the word makeover in the video. Like, like let's say I do something like in the salon and we're, we're doing a giveaway or whatever. And I say, hey, if you're interested in getting a total makeover from top to bottom, comment makeover. What happens is this like this robot, like a chat bot robot. What happens is this thing will actually go in privately message that person and say, hey, I saw that you messaged us and you'd like some information. And it starts to ask them a series of questions about what's going on, what their hair looks like, and it can match them with the perfect stylist inside their salon. And then it says, cool, if you're looking for this, here's Matt. He's really good at this style of education and coloring and whatever. I think you're really going to like him. Would you like to book an appointment? All done via this chat system that happens oh. automatically 24-7. And like it literally is like an employee working for you without have like 24 seven without so, having to have somebody sitting at the desk. It's crazy. So I, I love editing videos, but all of what you're yeah. saying right now sounds like a lot of work, right? So tell me, yeah. tell me, yeah. is it, is the process pretty like uh pretty uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, intricate, like easy like to do to it. Not easy. I, I can pretty, pretty much I mean, there is quite a bit. You have to, do you fill out a lot of stuff? Like how does it, how does that process work? Is it pretty big? I mean, look, if you're a little savvy, if you're a little savvy, then I think you can figure it out. I don't think it's super okay. complicated. What we do in our program is I actually give people the template and then they just go through and fill in their own stuff. Nice. So like I've kind of done okay. the heavy lifting part to do it. Like that's pretty cool. Um, okay. But like, I mean, like if you were like, Jason, how do I do this thing? I would just go here, take my template and modify my template. Like right. if, you know, I want to say this, like social media, if you can set up a social media page, which most of you have been able to figure that out, like you, you have your own personal page, you have a business page. If you can do that, you can build this many chat tool. It's not like you have to be a freaking computer programmer. Like right. if you want to do that five years or even just two years ago, you would have had to like hire some coder from the Ukraine to get it done. Now right. there's like a tool that like, if you can set up a Facebook page, you could probably set this up. Yeah. And there's like, everything is so much easier now, like for sure. So I want to pause the podcast real quick um, because not only were we live doing the podcast and we lost our signal, so it kind of cut out a little bit in the middle, um, but we didn't miss anything good. So we're going to jump into another subject. But before we do, I think this is a good time to remind you to subscribe to the podcast if you're not uh, lis if you're listening. Um, and also, if you're watching, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and Instagram and all that. Find everything free salon education. Um, but now we're going to get back into it. Get ready for this subject. Here we go. Go from 400 reps down to 10 or 20 reps, right? Huh. And what I think is crazy about that is that the idea that play helps you learn things at 10 times faster than if you sit in class is ridiculous, right? So yeah. we learn... It, like that's why you remember that like in seventh grade that you made a rocket or like that project where that thing exploded when you were going to school like you remember that 10 times more than you remember like reading the book about animal farm or whatever horrible book you had to read you know catcher in the rye or something and like yeah. you know you remember way more about that so when we do any of our learning experiences we always have a massive element of play involved because to your point matt like people are like oh you want to talk about salon ownership for the next hundred years okay come to my class and sit down and listen to this horrible classroom experience about salon ownership and by the way there's people out there that do that come at our yeah. five day somebody else's five day workshop and learn about and we'll bust out the spreadsheets and we're going to yeah. really dive into the business wah, wah, right like no no thank you so yeah. our events like we are probably at least they're at least 20 to 30 percent play at any given time and so like for example the crazy thing that we just did we just built these we called it a cajun yacht race we were down in louisiana so we did a cajun yeah. yacht race and we gave people three rolls of duct tape, four boxes, and they had to build a, a Cajun yacht to race across the pool. Now you might be like, well, what the hell does that have to do with salon ownership? Well, we put them into teams. They had to lead each other. There were leaders, there were followers. They had all these things they had to do. And like people left that and they're like, this is just like in my salon where I give it to somebody a task and they don't listen to my directions and da, 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 da. And so what happens is they, they learn by playing and then they take that back in the salon and they use that in a meaningful way that gets people to engage and they have all these epiphanies about how their business works and what's going on because they're learning 
about business management by playing a game. And it's, you could, I couldn't just say, here, Matt, here's some duct tape and some cardboard. You go do it right. and you'll have the same epiphanies. It's because yeah. of the context that we keep in our learning events. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Yep. So we do stuff like that. I think the cool thing that we did recently that was pretty ridiculous, we took eight salon owners rally car racing. Uh, that was pretty That was pretty sick. Uh, and, and actually, I'll tell you our next thing that we're doing too because I just announced that. Uh, but we took them rally car racing. So why do we take them rally car racing? Because we know that if you put if you put yourself in an uncomfortable learning environment, it's like something way outside your normal context, you can't help but learn about your business. And one of the yeah. big lessons from our rally car racing event was called 100% traction. You can't step on the gas and the brake and steer all at the same time. You can't do it. If you do it, you don't go anywhere. So in salons, how many times do you as a salon owner focus on mashing on the gas and marketing, working behind the chair, which is putting on the brakes, and steering, which is trying to do leadership? What most right. people do is they they only do one. They're either slammed all gas, they're slammed all brake, or they're trying to steer the steering wheel and they don't understand why they're not making any progress because they're not making they're not getting traction. And so that all came. That was actually the theme of our conference was called Driven. It was how do you make sure that you run and manage your salon with all the power that you need to have. And and that was like how that was a the whole theme of our conference. So we drove rally cars and then I surprised them with one last experience, which was we ended up taking them, uh, we ended up taking them uh paragliding off the top of tiger mountain which was a, a quick little surprise for them they didn't know what we were doing yeah it was ridiculous i saw the video I, did you post the video yet uh so we, so just i just released the recap video well to our group uh two days okay. ago so tomorrow i'll be posting i'll post it in the comments so you guys can see it but um okay. we, we had the recap video just released you saw the sneak peek don't tell anybody i gave it yeah. to you first uh and then we just announced our next they're called high octane adventures and you read like you ready for the next one we're doing and you you might want to come do this one, man. Um, we're we're gonna we're gonna go drive we're gonna go drive tanks and crush cars, like okay. literally drive a tank, military That's tanks. Like a service that <laughs> you that can crazy? buy. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, like straight up. You yeah. if you're in our program, you can sign up and come drive tanks with us next September in Minnesota. We're gonna go drive tanks, crush cars. But here here's the thing. It's fun. Like that's crazy in and of itself. And then by the way, we have a wild card experience that you'll find out when you're there. But like okay. the thing is, is that the amount like when you have to learn how to drive a tank, there's gonna be so many lessons about what it takes to drive this big heavy duty machinery. It's gonna yeah. teach you about leadership and about like what it takes to move this massive machine and what the upkeep is. There's gonna be so many valuable lessons that come from coming way outside your comfort zone. And again, I go back to like when you're a booth renter, Sometimes it can get stale. When you're a salon owner by yourself in a city, it can get stale. So I put you with like 10 or 15 other incredible salon owners, put you in a crazy fun context. We rent a house, like we have a private house that we get for it and we go drive tanks one day. I bring in some of my expert friends to do some other really valuable uh, personal development pieces. And then I throw a wildcard experience in there. And like, that's just, I think it's, in my opinion, that's kind of like the epitome of what my goal is, is to help people learn through play and have them leave and go, holy crap, and then come back and have another half a million dollar increase in sales that year in their business. You know what I mean? Like that that's what happens after we play. Like, how fun yeah. is that? That's really cool. And people are seem to be so tanks, that. tanks, Matt. You're coming for tanks. Posting. Um, so dude, I'll and, post the video. I'll post it. Yeah. And just so you know, I'm gonna repost this because for some reason the stream dropped a couple times, so it'll be broken up into a hundred posts on Facebook. So I'm recording. Sweet. It. And I'm going to repost it so that the whole thing's on there. So don't post it in this link. Uh, no problem, and, man. And Janice, just so you know, um, I did see your, I saw your question. So she's saying, do you educate salon owners on the law minimum wage until commission hits? Uh, W-2 employees, not 1099. There are salon owners who are operating yeah, illegally. Yeah, I can answer that one. Yeah. that That's a California question. Okay. Uh, so by the way, I am in California. That's the, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's a California question and that's going to roll out. Here's what I would say. Um, short answer. No. And, and the reason why I say no is you got to chat with your attorney. And I have literally had like knockdown drag out chats with salon owners who will argue this point. Commission in California is illegal. Rental in California is illegal. Like literally I could talk to two salon owners. They tell me two different things. You need to talk to an attorney and I do have a referral to an attorney if you want to call and have that conversation because neither one is illegal. They just have changed the rules. So I'll yeah. give you a short version is like you can't have a rental salon in California if you also work behind the chair. Like 
do your own research and learn what you think that means. But like if you had a rental salon and you work behind the chair, the government thinks that you're running a commission salon. And so they want you to pay time off, sit time. There's all these things that know a lot about it, but you also need to chat with a actual attorney because it is getting dicey in California. And a lot of people are confused about what the law says. Yeah, for sure. And I totally agree with that. That I was going to have a way different answer, which is that that's not something that you should be teaching. You, you're not teaching the legal, you know, procedures. No, no, salon. God, no, that's not like, me. Not my jam, man. Be, if you're an owner, that's part of your job is to make sure that you're not doing things illegally. Like you shouldn't have right. to take a class from Jason on that. You should definitely be <laughs> looking at laws. Like part of being an owner is, is doing things that are not fun. Right. So right. looking at laws, understanding, you know, making sure you're treating your employees right. You know, what, what are you lawfully supposed to do? That's part of being a salon owner. It's not just, I can do hair and I'm going to open a business. You know, like you have to know those things. You have to look them up. You have to understand your taxes, all that stuff. Like that's just part of the, yeah. it's, it's not fun. It's not fun, you know, for people that don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so well and here, here's what i would say is like if you like matt dude there's parts of my business i really don't like either right like i mean just running my business like i don't love to sit and look at spreadsheets and like get my quickbooks up to date and like do all that stuff like that's yeah. the stuff i want to gouge my eyes out like dude if i could just be on podcast with matt beck every day i'd be like whoa that's my jam or like on stage or driving tanks or doing whatever right. like i love that stuff but like i have to have those meetings and let people go i have to run my quickbooks and manage my finances yeah. like i have to figure out did i make a profit or should I go booth rent on my own because I'm a salon. And like, this is the danger, right? So many salon owners make less than they would if they just freaking booth rented, but they, they have this heart for other people sometimes that yeah. is so big that they, they just, they do the heart stuff and they forget to do the business stuff. And so what I would say is we try and make all the business stuff as sexy as possible. And so like, you know, you're around other people and you're like, I love these people. We're down in new Orleans. We're making these, you know, cardboard boats. We're doing all this stuff. And Oh, by the way, I happened to learn about the law while I was here. Then right. more power to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure. So, all right, cool. So everybody out there, if you, even if you don't become part of Jason's like, you know, salon business venture. Nah, I do. You don't have to do that. Just learn. Follow him on, uh, follow him on Facebook. You're always posting on Facebook, Instagram as well. Pretty much. I mean, yeah, Facebook, everything. Instagram, just look up high performance salon, man. Just look yeah. up high performance salon or look up Jason Everett. You'll find us all over the place. And uh, I'd love to connect with you guys for sure. Yeah, and he's definitely, I mean, he's posting con content constantly uh, on all those platforms. So if you're looking to learn through video and all that stuff, the things he's given out now today, he's also doing that online. So uh, thank you. Thanks for being a guest. Dude, super fun, bro. Thank you so much for having me on. You do good work. Thanks for letting Let's me hang it. with you. It's we an honor. Do, we, we should do an ongoing like podcast. I feel like it's yeah, dude. I let's do like, it. I feel like it's good conversation. So we'll set up another time. Let, but let's let's keep this thing going for sure. I like it, bro. Well, you thank like you again, man. Thanks everybody for watching and hanging out with us. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks. <laughs>